alien invasion. Is it biblical? Of course it is. Clearly I'm not here today as a fact witness. You can Google it. I think you just use the Bible, do whatever the hell you like. Just remember, it's not a lie if you believe it. Welcome to Mystery Bible Theater 3000. My name is Caleb Hag, and with me, of course, my lovely assistant, Rob Van Hoff. What is up, Rob? How's it going? Lovely. Lovely. Everything assistant. is lovely. All right, let's do it. This is a good one. This might be um, the one. This is the one. Um, but first, hi, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to Mystery Bible Theater 3000. Hi. If you, welcome. If you, welcome. We've been getting a lot of, we've been getting, getting a lot of emails for Mystery Bible uh, in the past couple of weeks, which has been really nice. And uh, you can, if you're out there in the internets and you feel like you want to send us a video, Go ahead, chegatorresource.com. C H E. And also, if you have, if you want to establish a million dollar endowment, yes, for please. all that, future, please, to guarantee yes. the future of Mystery Bible 3000 exactly. and slight improvement in production quality, then <laughs> contact Caleb Hayes. <laughs> slight. Yeah. $1 million. <laughs> that'll get you a slight improvement. Maybe we'll lighten Rob up a little bit. You never yeah. can tell. <laughs> All right. Um, you can also shoot, uh, send us uh, a voicemail, 253-465-3205, 253-465-3205. You won't talk to us. You just talk to an answering machine. And uh, I'm not sure why you do that for Mystery Bible Theater 3000, but I put the uh, I put the, the phone number in, so I just figured I'd, I'd show that to you. And uh, see how you tore, uh, what am I? I already did that. Don't forget we're, we're open for business. Don't, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> yes, exactly. Whatever. You, you know, right? You know what's e- going Email, on. phone. Email, mail, phone, whatever. Okay, and then um, yeah, so yeah, don't don't miss our our main show either, right? Okay, is that it? Is that it? Can we stop advertising now? This one comes to us. Actually, I got this this morning, and uh, it, it was such a good one that I thought we got we we just got to use this. And lo and behold, Rob had sent me one a week and a half ago, and he said, "Hey, check this out." I looked for it, and it had been deleted. And uh, Rob this morning told me, "Hey, the guy in this video is using the same PowerPoint. Like he, he's probably ripping well, off. Well, at least yeah, exactly the same slide. Same slide. So, so this is <laughs> but this it's a different dude. going around. Yeah. So uh, let's before we jump into this, let's just say you know, with everything going on in Israel, we're getting people on all sides of of the uh, uh, belief spectrum sending us emails about end times." And, uh, you know, what's going on in Israel is horrific. <clears throat> and uh, I just keep assuring myself by looking at the scriptures that uh, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, you know. Uh, and uh, so it, with, I don't even want to get into the politics of all of it, but uh, ultimately, could this be the end times? I mean, I, we could say that about any time in history. We could say... People it, have. Times. Yeah, exactly. People of faith have uh, thought that. Right. People, so, you know, snake oil salesmen have have sold books oh, yeah. saying yeah. such things. Yeah. So I mean, and uh, and I'm sure that the uh, the same old suspects in the Hebrew Roots movement will probably make a, a fortune off of the uh, off of it as well, which is unfortunate. Here's the thing: is that I I don't actually have a problem, uh, you know, with this being the end times. If it is, obviously that's it's totally up to the Lord. Um, however, I try not to get uh, too uh, invested in any kind of end time, uh, thoughts simply because, uh, for 2000 years now, the world has believed that it's the end times. So I figure it this way. Uh, I am confident that the Lord will allow his, the faithful to persevere through persecution. I am confident there w- will be persecution during that, during the end time towards the, uh, ter- towards the believers. I'm sure that Israel will be, uh, you know, attacked during the end, end times. Um, and so with all of that said, could it be the end times? Of course it could be the end times. However, I'm not, I'm not, putting my chips down on, on uh, red or black. Let's put it that way. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not betting on it. Uh, How would I it think... affect if we're, if we're yeah, walking yeah, with God, yeah. it don't Perfect. matter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Am How I gonna, gonna if, affect... if I'm going to suddenly walk differently because I think it's the end times, I probably need to kick the tires on my theology 
and check. I tell you what, I will tell you what. Check you know, under the have, hood. I've known a bunch of people who are preppers. You know, they got like they got like land out in Wyoming or something. Who knows where? You know, with like a a buried, uh, you know, shipping container that they can live in for X amount of of, of months or whatever with a food supply, and they're they're gonna. That's where they're going. You know, when it's the end times, that's where they're going. They're going to go live in that thing. To me, I just don't know if that's plausible. I, I think that what you're saying is exactly right. We walk with the Lord. Um, you know, obviously, I want to keep my family safe. and I want to keep myself safe. So would I leave my home if I if if I had to, if I felt like there was, you know, war, eminent war here, or if uh, believers are being slaughtered or, you know, executed or whatever, yeah, I'd probably grab my family and try to go somewhere. But, I mean, and, you know, I've had people tell me, well, by then it'll be too late. It's like, well, you know what? That's in the Lord's hands. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not scared. Um, you know, I'm, I think that uh, the Lord will direct us. Anyway, with all of that said, the whole, oh, well, we're seeing that, you know, this is this prophecy fulfilled and all that kind of stuff. Okay, maybe, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I, exactly what Rob said is, is my thought. You know, if this is, if this is it, Great. It just means the sooner I get to see the Lord, right? Maybe He'll come in my lifetime, or maybe uh, maybe I'm standing at death's door, and uh, and the Lord's going to bring me through. I would through actually even push back on the someone on someone who's saying, "Oh, I'm a believer, but boy, I'm covered because I've invested in all this security and safety." I'm like, uh, yeah, it's probably not where the Lord wanted you to put all that money. I, hey, you know what? I'll tell you what. You know, I had, because I, you, there is no to think you're covered somehow by the flesh, by by setting apart some special escape route or a, a escape room or whatever, and then going, oh yeah, well, you, and then telling other people they should consider doing the same thing. I, that's not what I get from the prophets. That's not what I get from Yeshua. That's not what I get from the apostles. So people who are behaving that way, I would say, check your behavior against the pattern of Scripture. You know, I had an interesting call about, I don't know, maybe six months ago, and uh, a brother in the Lord co- called and said that he was moving somewhere. And I said, oh, okay, well, uh, and we started talking about it, and he said, you know, for the greater exodus. And I said, well, you know, the the uh, the belief of, of, of the Staffatory resource is that the greater exodus happened on the cross. And he said, oh, well, I mean, yeah, I agree with you on that, but you don't think that there's going to be an exodus where, uh, you know, where believers are able to go to cities of refuge during the tribulation and and uh, be safe. Where did they, did you ask, did you ask where they got? Well, no, I are just Are there say, teachers you know, out there pushing that? Is that a I, Monty well, Judah thing? Or what? I, don't I have no, what. I have no clue. But, but I just, I just say, you know, I, I don't see that in scripture. And after I got off the phone with him, I thought to myself, man, exactly what you're saying. I wonder where he's getting that in scripture. Did I miss something? Is this like, is hmm? Anyway, um, I don't know. Okay, we've talked a lot in eight minutes. GE Greater Exodus. <gasps> General Electric starts with GE. Oh, that's probably a it's probably an Illuminati scam Connecting to sell the dots to sell like food uh, supplies okay. and stuff. Okay, you heard it here first. Okay, because people uh, need refrigerators. That's right, and freezers uh, and GE's. Gonna, <laughs> I've had some trouble. Gonna supply those. I've had some trouble and generators today with video freezing. Anyway, okay, here we go. Let's kick over and see this. Okay, um, I don't know who this person is in the video. Uh, it, it looks like they, I don't know if he's a guest speaker somewhere or if this is his church. It looks like they have a pretty fancy s- setup on the uh, on the back of the screen here. Another place they put all their money in the right places. <laughs> oh. This is another uh, example of a, uh, of, a, of a church community putting all their hey, resources you know, right in the could, right places. We could do a whole we could do a whole uh, debate on that or a whole discussion on that. Is it is it wrong to try to give people a great experience? In my opinion, the, the I personally, the, you know, this I think this all comes down to personal preference, right? But personally, I find it to be a, a better and more reverent experience for me personally to go into a church where there is maybe a choir but probably not singing out of a hymn book, some hymns, acapella, no need for a, a band, right? 
and a time of prayer, time of hymns, time of reading the Bible, and a, and a message. I find that way more uh, entertaining and uh, experiential, if you will, than smokes, you know, uh, smoke machines, lasers, and skinny jeans. It, it, I mean, I know it's all personal preference, but uh, location I walked into a uh, a church one time. The, I mean, this shows this shows that I'm getting old. It does. This was probably ten years ago, though, and and we both said <laughs> the music the music is so loud, right? I can't stand how loud the music. This is like a rock concert. We really, I mean, we really did. The in the back of my mind, out. in the back of my mind, Caleb, I, a recent. Uh, YouTube comment on one of our videos is these guys never get to the point. <laughs> these guys never get to the point. Ah, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. These guys never get to the point. Anyway. That's, hey, so this is another example. But hey, it's our show. If you want to get to your point, start your own Yeah, yeah show. go for it. It's but all, guess anyway, what? I'll... It's not going to be called Messiah Matters. Yeah, so here's here's the point. Here's the point. Is that <laughs> we, you know, I don't think that there's necessarily anything wrong with spending money on a setup for your stage. When you bring this guy, when you bring this guy to, in for to, sure. to put to pretend to put food in front of Yeshua's flock, it's a it's a it's a travesty, it's a shame. And it is like I was telling Caleb off off the record, this is feeding junk excrement to the flock yeah okay let's well, i didn't use the hey, word excrement. let's get to let's get to the point <laughs> let's get to the point for for those out there saying when will these guys ever get to the point here we go let's keep let's, it let's keep it g okay here we go ready what is the mark of the beast no man might buy or sell let's stop already okay i'm sorry when somebody says hey i'm going to tell you what the mark of the beast is unless the the answer is nero run right i mean i'm not necessarily i shouldn't say that but ultimately it's we're getting into speculation as soon as somebody says it's it, you know i've was solved it, it i've solved it it was it nero back in the first century absolutely i think it was nero okay but i believe it's a telescoping prophecy so whatever it's going to be down the road we have no clue so it's not necessarily that you should run but because you know it's fun to speculate sometimes even I speculate every once in a while. Hmm, I wonder if this could be the Mary of the Beast. Um, but the point is, is that anyone who <laughs> anyone who tells you that, that they anyone who voice. tells you that they they got the answers, you know, they're they're trying to sell something. Here we go. What is the mark of the beast? No man might buy or sell save he have the mark or the name or the number of the beast. Mark, name, number. We're all about the mark. We don't we forget about the name and the number. For it is the number of a man, and the number is six hundred sixty-six. It's not six hundred sixty-six. That's a translation. That's the number. How many can see it? Can you see it? The cross swords. Bismillah, which means in the name of Allah. And by the way, when you go to jihad, you wear this on your forehead. See where they're wearing it? On their foreheads. This is what he saw. He was Aramaic. The Bible was written in Aramaic, not English. So he looked at me and goes, 666. No, that's what he saw. X, Aleph, S. Can you see it now? Bismillah, that's what he saw. The name of the beast. Bismillah, in the name of Allah. When I saw that symbol, I was like, dear God, if that doesn't shock you, I don't know what will. Oh, my Lord. It is shocking. It is shocking. The level of ignorance here. Now, before people just think that we're just going to rag on this guy, let me just say the reason that we're going to rag on this guy is because he's using three languages and conflating them all as the same. The symbol that that uh, the jihadists use is not Greek. It's not a Greek. That's like saying, "What? Uh, what's a good example of this? Uh, you know, the that a uh, I don't know. You know, it's like trying to say. Oh, I, I'll is- tell you an example. Someone took oh, Elon Musk's X. Yeah, you know the X for Twitter and put it against a mirror. So it looks like two X's, but the, it looks like the, uh, um, what do you call that? The Masons, where you have the the ruler and the compass, and it makes two X's. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's like that sort of thing. It's, this is, this, did you have any, because I, I have a few points I want to say, but, but go ahead and finish your bit. 
Okay. Well, what I was going to say is, let's see here. Um, it's like saying mm, maybe like a, a psi in, in Greek is like a W in English. Like just because things look the same or, a, a, or an omega, right? Like the omega in, in Greek looks like a W in English. They're not even related in any way, shape or form. They, I mean, they do they look the same? Yeah, they look the same, but they're not the same. And so it would the be ones like that, the ones that are crazy, like uh, the the new in Greek looks like a V. So that's often people learning Greek. They see the new and they say V or the row looks like a P. So they'll say put and it's like, no, that's a row. Um, yeah, the point it, the point it, here is, is, is the, the point here is just because something looks like something else doesn't. It, my father always makes this example. The grass is green and frogs are green. Therefore, the grass must be frogs. That's the, that's what people are doing. False here. logic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's false logic. It's like, well, you no, know, just because the grass is green and frogs are green doesn't make them the same thing. And that's exactly what's happening here. Just because, you know, you're, you're, and not only that, but you're talking about Semitic languages versus Western languages, and you're trying to conflate them. What's really interesting to me is at the very end, he says... Let's see if I can find it. Oh, yeah, right here. He says... It was Aramaic. The Bible's written in Aramaic, not English. So we look and we go, 666. No, that's what he saw. X. So that's what he... He says, no, that's what he saw. And then he points to Greek. Well, which one is it? Was it Aramaic or was it Greek? Yeah, he doesn't know. He has no clue what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Beyond this, uh, this is clearly a, uh, a way that they're using numeric value. And 666 and 616, the variant, all add up to Nero. Well, what, what do you notice about the image there? The picture that he's got? What else is around it? Uh, hang on, let's go back. Uh, jihad. Uh, I don't know, you tell me. Well, it's got, you can see that it's, first of all, it's a printed text. Right. So this is a printed edition. You can see it's got the number 666 below it. So it's an interlinear Greek English. And then you see to the upper left, you see a thing that looks like a little mark, which is a, a text find, critical I'm, apparatus. I'm okay. trying to find, oh yeah, 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 okay. So, okay, so he's not looking at the original manuscript. He's, right. he, what he's interpreting is the font selection of the printers of the fancy Greek. There are just three Greek letters. That's a right. C. The 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 what he calls the cross swords, that's the first letter of the word Christ in every instance right. throughout the Greek Bible. So all of a sudden here, it doesn't mean a he. Right. It means cross swords. The letter, the second letter is a C. It's used throughout the New Testament. But here it's an Arabic word on its side. And the last one is a final sigma. So he is, and, and if you look at the C, the, the, the reason it looks similar is because of the circumstance of whoever selected the Greek font for this, for printing this edition. Right. I can show you other, and this is only, this is in the majority text. This is the Texas Receptus that has the three letters representing numbers rather than it spelled out. Like if you look at Sinaiticus, which is a fourth century Greek text, it's spelled out 666. Like we would write S-I-X-H-U-N-D, right? You would write it out. But if you go back to the wit early text witnesses that have it in the letters like this, and you look at what they look like, they don't look anything like Arabic. They don't look like anything like this uh, 20th century printed interlinear Greek Bible. This is one of the most blatant uh, disregard of the word of God. It is an absolute affront to the transmission of the sacred Bible to the labor, the serious labor required that to, to, for a translator to gain competency and skill and, and what their task is. And he's just in one 15 second blip. He's telling you it's not a translation. 
he's telling you it's it it's or he's telling you it's a six 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 is a translation, but that's not the original meaning. He then and this is he's referring to a Greek interlinear Bible, but then he brings he throws this Aramaic thing at the wall, like you pointed out, Caleb. This guy needs someone needs to shut this guy up. This in is the, this in the, in the churches anyway. He can talk, let him spew his stuff in the marketplace, but but this. This is poison for Yeshua's flock. Let's see if I can. And Yeshua's my... flock needs to be protected from snake oil salesmen and scoundrels like this. Okay, hang on just a second. So, right here, let's see if I can bring my. Okay, uh, I don't know if people can see my cursor. I think they can. So right up here, there's no line over this letter. Right, there is no line here. It's just the letter. Now look at what he does. Look at what he does. I can't see what you're doing, but I, I know. But are then, you showing? He, I, yeah, hang on just a sec. He comes over to the, he puts a line over it here in his, in his. A line uh, over what? It's the, over the middle letter. And <clears throat> then because in oh, the. the line er, it, in the original manuscript, the line goes over all three letters. So you have three letters with a line all the way over all three of them. And that tells you oh. that it's a number. And it's similar to the nomen of sacred. So a sacred names, they'll put like for theos, let's say they'll put theta and a sigma, and then they put a line over both. And that tells the reader, oh, that's a, a code yeah, okay, yeah. for a word, theos. Right. And they're doing the same thing here. This it, guy, just, this guy is a, a wonderful example of a lot of things that are exactly wrong in the church and the, but, the shallowness of churches of not all churches, but the shallowness of churches that have money and the ability to put on a show like this, but they are, they are without substance. There is no prof, did, profitable okay, but, content for the edification of the flock. I agree with you, but let's calm down for a second. Where do you think that this guy no. gets this? <laughs> what do you think? I mean, no, there's a book. This was like ten years ago. There's a guy. Public, this might be the guy who wrote the book. Someone is selling this snake oil in a book, and then they say what they want to do then is say, "Oh, now I can frame all the people's fears about jihad and radical Islam, and now just go through the Bible and just uh, interpret all Bible prophecy according to this template and sell a book, sell books on it." Yeah. All right. And and everybody just goes, oh, oh, wow. God's wow. God prophesied by the shape of a letter. Da, da, da. I think that this is one of the reasons that God I allows don't... God allows this foolishness so that it can be exposed. And this guy's exposed. I don't think that I like I I think that this is the reason that I uh, steer clear of a lot of es eschatology in terms of, you know, certainly we read it in the Bible all the time. But, but teachers who are teaching a lot on eschatology, I tend to stay away from. And the reason why is because you have you can make opinions or make suggestions that sound so good that people automatically believe it's fact. And the thing is, is people get into this kind of theology and say, oh, my word, it's amazing. It's, a word, it's, it's like Hebrew word pictures, but it's exactly. Greek word pictures. Yep, exactly. All right. Uh, once again. Chegg at resource.com, C-H-E-G-G at resource.com. Also, uh, you can s leave us a uh, voicemail, 253-465-3205. Uh, Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I know it sounds weird, but it really does help us. And last but definitely not least, don't forget to catch us every Wednesday, uh, 9.30 a.m. Pacific time, and uh, we're on YouTube. Yeah, but uh, we will be gone this coming Wednesday at the ETS and SPL meeting. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We will catch you on the flip side.